All right, let's uh, let's roll this one more time. See how I can get on. When when it loads. Here we go. All right. So this is Metal Gear Solid One. Just to prove I am on console and not on not on an emulator. Here is the PSTV's console menu. Can't see it all because I've cropped I've cropped everything down so that it fits properly. There you go. We will be revisiting this menu to uh, to change the disc at some point. Uh, there we go. That um, that that screen that is the adrenaline menu. We're still on PSTV. Don't completely normal right let's get started Melga solid any percent easy on official hardware on console PSTV three two one go wahoo and I haven't switched the um I haven't switched the language from Japanese to English. This will be there'll be a slight time loss at the end. It's not a huge one. It's only like a second or something. A couple of seconds. It's fine. Got our alert first alert nice and early. So I'm encouraging the other guy to come over. Run around. We uh, start getting our uh, start getting our alert farming going. Uh, so those who've not seen a, a Metal Gear Solid speed run before, this is called alert farming. Uh, this is where we um, deliberately get alerts whilst waiting for the elevator. Uh, we want to get uh, before we go down to grab the pal key towards the end of the game. We want to have at least eleven alerts. Uh, by doing this, it means that. The pal key will be um, will spawn in a random location in the drainage ditch. You have ten or less alerts when you go down there. A rat will have eaten the key instead, and it is uh, in most cases it's RNG on both fronts. Whichever one you do, there's RNG involved. Uh, but the um, the better RNG is faster with the uh, with the key in a random location than it is with the rat. Uh, so I'm going to uh, get six or seven. Um, six or seven um, alerts down here. It should there should be enough alerts throughout the rest of the game to uh, to get the amount we need. One more, one more alert here. There we go. Just as the the Jeremy Blousing credit was there, and we want this alert to disappear. It's all around now. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's um it was it was something that really surprised me. It was something that really surprised me when I first watched a speedrun. Um mainly because before that I didn't realise that I never actually completed a game of Metal Gear Solid without getting um uh, without getting less than eleven alerts. So I'm watching speed, watching the speedrun and the and the, when I first started watching speedruns, this was before that was really known. Um, and the rat getting the rat was the the main way of doing it because it wasn't known how many alerts you needed. Um, and then it was figured out and and the route changed to uh, to include all the alerts. Um, and the runners were talking about you know I'm going to go down fi find the rat we'll find the rat kill the rat and hit you know then the card will spawn. I'm like, what rat? There's no rat. You know, and then the runner goes down and there's a rat, he kills the rat, and the card key pops out of the rat. And I'm like, what is this? There's, there, there's no rat. The, the rat doesn't... There's no rat. You, the, you just find the card in the ditch. And yeah, it's because up until that point, I had never, ever completed a run, a, a casual playthrough of Metal Gear Solid, without getting less than 11 alerts. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, yes, now uh, 
If you're doing um, if you're doing a big boss run, if you're trying to if you're playing on extreme and trying to get the big boss ranking, uh, which is for four or less alerts, then you will kill the rat because you have to kill the rat because you can't get alerts. Uh, on the GameCube remake, the Twin Snakes, uh, you always go for the rat. Um, the rat, um, it, there's no RNG with the rat. The rat's always in the same place on Twin Snakes. And I think someone looked into it and the number of alerts you need to not spawn the rat is like 30, which isn't isn't really doable um, in a speed run. Uh, but as I say, there, there's no RNG with the rat and it's nice and fast on uh, on Twin Snakes. I love your, uh, I love your, um, emotes, um, nemesis. <laughs> They're really cool. So, head up to the elevator. Whoops. Make sure I'm actually over the button. Hope the guard doesn't spot me because I took too long. It's all good. And now we are going to do the very famous vent glitch. Go out of bounds and completely skip the first 20 minutes of Metal Gear Solid 1. Okay, it's just like that. We're in the cell. Ba -ba 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 very very old very very old trick one of the one of the first tricks found oh, that's cool oh outer heaven network isn't it ohn out of heaven network <laughs> uh yeah i can imagine i can imagine the game just stops because it's the, this room shouldn't be coded into it Come on, Kodak. There we go. Eventually. Right, we're now going to wait for Johnny to come back. Uh, we're very deliberately doing um, a certain sequence here. Uh, we're going to make Johnny think that we're, we've escaped and then crawl out from under the bed to show him that we haven't escaped. Uh, this is going to... This will alter Johnny's pattern um, as he patrols um, and we get, a f uh, we get a faster resolution. There we go. Uh, if you if Johnny doesn't think that he escaped, he'll do his normal route. But I think he stops and sleeps, or he has some more dialogue or something. By do, doing this, it's quicker. Uh, so now there's nothing we can do. We just have to we just have to sit and wait for Johnny to finish his patrol and uh, send us off to chat with uh, chat with us a lot on his nice on his nice metal bed. A really nice, comfy metal bed for us to lie on. Wouldn't that be lovely? Could do with a good lie down. Uh, I think the game. I think the game you're thinking of um, is the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time demo when? that is on Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Had enough. So I think that is the uh, that is the demo the that Swar Beardson is alluding to. But I'll take the woman in return. <laughs> it has a nice nap for forty seconds. You can still look at yourself in the mirror, my friend. That's one of the that one's one of the coolest sort of game within a game um speedrun tricks. The one the one that I love the most just because it is so freaking bizarre is is I think it's I think on the Wii it's paper I think it might be Paper Mario whatever Paper Mario game was available on the Wii. Like Paper Mario Thousand Year Door or something like that. And to start off the run, you play Skyward Sword. 
<laughs> it's, so, it's something, it's some weird combination like that. I can't, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's my favorite instance of games just being bizarre. And the speed running games, it's like the, because it saves, uh, might not be the Wii, it might be the N64 or something. It's something to do with memory locations and the memory location of one game is stored when you then boot up the second game and it does something. It's, it's crazy. I love speedrunning. It's so dumb. There's so many really weird, dumb, awesome things that happen in speedruns. This is why it always makes me mad when you see people like, oh, glitches, cheating. It's like, yeah, that's the point. I suppose these glitches completely break these games apart. It's why they're fun. It's why they're fun to watch. You have to think, how the hell did someone come up with this? Like the weapon glitch and the weapon glitch we're going to do in a little bit is so bizarre. It's weird. How did someone come up with it? A lot of it is memory. A lot of it is people, you know, digging into the um, digging into the code to see what they can find. Right, we've got a bit of a time save here. Um, I made um, I made a bit of a, an error with Johnny. Um, and I also made an error picking up the PSG one. Uh, as I've, as I talked about before, I'm playing this now on official hardware, uh, and the PS TV that I'm playing it on, um, it does have. And this is this isn't my PS TV. There's the same across all PS TVs. Um, it has some slight input lag, so I'm trying to get used to that input lag. So super non-canon. Um, non-canon run. Meryl's dead. Johnny's dead. The, the, the lovers are dead. Alright, let's go get that PSG one. Night, Caro. Have a good evening. See you on Thursday. Let's see if I get this right this time. Hey, there we go. That's a good start. Probably. Probably not going to reach that guard in time, so I'm going to play this safe and go round. Oops. There is a slightly faster route through that, but I wanted to play that safe. Sweet. Nice little time save. <laughs> Johnny's family are always ambiguously alive and dead. Uh, you don't have to get up. Um, you can do it without getting up, but you have to be very quick. And I knew I was not very quick. <laughs> So, no tank boss fight. Skip that. We've, I mean, we've already skipped an, an absolute ton of boss fights. Um, tank, Mantis, Sniper Wolf One, uh, Ninja. Ninja's Ninja's already dead. Um, what else we skipped? Ocelot. No ocelot fight. Loads of fights missed. Grenades. That guy. The elevator before he comes over. Good room. Ping. I'll make my way through to communication tower A. Our last run, I got the Boba Skip first try. So, of course, it's not going to happen this time. Ooh, let's keep that weapon equipped, shall we? Have another ration. And into the cave. 
going to do another vent glitch because it's just a little bit easier. Uh, sorry, a little bit quicker to get over that. Get around the first dog without having to... Uh, as long as you're quick there, the uh, second dog will not hit you. So that was that was a really fast cave. That was really nice. Swap to the grenades, because that's the next weapon I'm going to want. I'm going to grab that ration. I was um, very low on rations last run. So any that are not too out of the way, I'm going to grab. Little uh, little codec and cutscene here with uh, Campbell. Snake feeling very sorry for himself. <laughs> he couldn't do it. <laughs> he couldn't protect her. <laughs> and we're going to head over to the tower. What? Uh, big time save here. This is where I died last run because I was overcompensating the input lag and didn't throw this grenade properly. That's better. Get to the sun grenades. Whoa. Whoa. Right, come on, Boba Skip. Let's see it first try. Oh, slightly, um, slightly too slow on that one. I'm going to throw my stun grenade here. And set up for the baby skip. Come on, first try. Nope. Second try. I am living the best life ever because I beat the video game. I am living the best life ever because I am out of the stairwell of shame. I am the best at video games. Not quite the, you know, the absolute upbeat, bouncy, bouncy version uh, that you'd uh, that I'd give if it was a, if it was a first first try, Boba Skip. Right, uh, communication tower B. Sure, I completely forgot to, uh, to split again. I'm going to continue to forget to split because I'm on manual splits instead of auto splitting. Uh, communication tower B. Um, quite um, quite a weird one on uh, on console. First try! That is the weapon glitch. That was really nice. Uh, it's the weapon glitch there. You you do a bunch of weird inputs. Uh, and now the game thinks that I'm uh, that the grenade I'm holding is actually my stinger. I'm now going to throw my stinger. So I've now thrown my stinger, so I now no longer have the stinger launcher. Um, I'm now going to run all the way up these stairs. And what we're going to do is by running up here, we're going to reset the room. And by having the room think that we don't have the stinger launcher, the room think, and we haven't had the Otacon cutscene, the room is going to respawn the boxes that appear. Um, because the room... Is that four? I'm going to throw one more. Oops. There we go. Um, the room is going to respawn the boxes because it thinks that we uh, we haven't had the Otacon cutscene yet. And that's how we're going to skip the high D fight. So we're going to go up to the high D fight. And as I say, this is just to reset the room. And be on this side of it. Uh, do not go outside. If you go outside here, uh, the game... Uh, you softlock. Um... You are in a position where you have to fight the hind D and you have no stinger. So the game softlocks. There's nothing you can do. 
Uh, I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna play this safe, and I'm gonna grab the extra chaff grenades that are here. Uh, there is a ration towards the end of that, but I'm pretty good for rations at the moment, I think. I'm gonna throw these chaff grenades. I threw that chaff grenade one flight of stairs too early. That was perfect timing for that one. No, I run um, I run uh, lots of different games, I, lots of different um, Metal Gears. Um, I actually ran Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes at SGDQ this year. Uh, that was a really good run, li live in America. Uh, I also run, wa I do also run Wacky Races. I haven't, I haven't run it for a little bit, but yes, I, I do run Wacky Races. Uh, oh, I, I'm going to equip my weapon. And there's a little glitch, if I can get it right. I have to have um, Snake's positioning correct. Where Snake... There we go. Uh, so yeah, a little glitch where if you turn without a weapon, Snake will get up on top of the boxes like that. And we can move straight through to, uh, to Wolf. Oh, I moved too far forwards. Yeah, no full down. The game game didn't... Uh, the, the, this game doesn't know what vertical height is. Um, so there's no full damage in this. You just watch a PC run. PC runs are even crazier for this kind of shit. Uh, so we need... So we're going to... Uh, we're going to skip Sniper Wolf 2 using the weapon glitch again. Uh, I do need to do a slight bit of prep. I need the ration. And I need my stun grenade. Was... Quite right. Hopefully that was right. Yay! There we go. And that is um, Sniper Wolf. Sniper Wolf skipped. Uh, so we used the weapon glitch again to make the game think that I had the sniper rifle equipped and I could run with the sniper rifle. Uh, for some reason, that allows us to get past the invisible barrier, separating us from uh, from Wolf. Uh, and uh, yeah, from ah, oh, if you move it, you can kind of avoid getting shot by that if you if you're careful with your movement. It's a bit tricky. So we're now got to go back. Uh, the reason we go back is we still don't actually have the stinger. Uh, the PC run is crazier because um, they introduced weapon hotkeys. You never need to open the weapon menu on the PC version. Uh, by using the buttons 1 through 0 at the top of the keyboard, um, you can change weapons on the fly. Um, what they didn't anticipate with that is, is that it means that you can interrupt uh, the animation of Snake equipping the PSG-1. Uh, during that animation, Snake is invulnerable. Um, and so by interrupting the animation and never having it complete, Snake remains invulnerable. Uh, he can also do some other crazy stuff like go out of bounds with the trick. Uh, by tricking the game into thinking that your location isn't where you are. Uh, it's a much faster run. It doesn't involve having to go back for the... Uh, for the... Um, uh, for the... Uh, Stinger. <laughs> you don't have to go back for the stinger. You don't have to do this this sort of backwards and forwards with the, with this section of the game. Uh, it's the the run the PC run is what got me into speed running properly. I'd speed run a couple of games beforehand, but it was always sort of a little bit casually and, and not for very long. Um, Metal Gear Solid One PC was the the game that really got me into speed running properly. Um, and it's taken a long time. Um, nearly three years for me to finally, um, get into playing actual console. So we now need to switch discs, switch disc two. Right. May look like I've lost a lot of time on that individual split, but that is because I completely forgot to split <laughs> previously. 
Nice. Got that trick right. Uh, so by using the stun grenade uh, outside the door, it still stuns everyone in the room. You don't get an alert. Whilst everyone's stunned, we can throw a grenade without getting alert because there's no one to hear it. So that was lovely. Flip that guy. And head into the cargo elevator. We're going to head back out the door again because the cargo elevator is slowly coming towards us. Uh, and by going out and back in again, it forces the cargo elevator to just be there now. Which is slightly quicker. And now we're going to have the cargo elevator fight. Not bad. Be better than last time. <laughs> Could have been better. I got shot a few, a few more times. I also, I haven't gotten used to doing the other order. So I've been doing bottom right, bottom left, top. And you should actually do bottom right, top, bottom left. It's easier to dodge bullets by going in a diagonal direction to the, uh, the guy in the top right. So if you've been keeping up so far with this run, then uh, you will have counted the number of bosses that I've actually beaten. And that number right now is a big fat zero. Uh, we have encountered Sniper Wolf 2, but we didn't fight her. We skipped her. Uh, we're now going to go and fight Raven. And this is actually going to be the first boss fight of the game. We are actually going to fight and defeat Raven. Now, there is still a trick to it. Um, so I don't have the Nikita. Uh, I, st I have the Stinger, but I don't have any ammo for it. Because uh, right now the game... The game hasn't given me any ammo for the stinger. We're still at zero out of zero ammo. Uh, so instead, we're going to use grenades to defeat Raven. I should have play. I should have two or three uh, rations, which is five. If I've only got one, then I'll go and grab an extra ration. Because there's one ration in this room, and we just tank, uh, tank all of his damage. I've got two Rush Russians, that should be fine. Whoops. Hope that hits Raven. Did. And this is it. We just get up. Start charging of grenades. When I get hit, Snake drops the grenades. And eventually it explodes on Raven. And we just... Tank all of his damage until he's dead. And that was Raven. Again, looks like a massive time save, but that would have been because I forgot to split. <laughs> It probably it was still a time save. It just wasn't that that as impressive. So wait for all these cutscenes, codec rather. Uh, I want my single chaff grenade. I'll grab, uh, I'll grab some more chaff grenades and some more rations as we make our way into Rex's chamber, the underground base. There we go. 28 minutes and we are already in front of the final boss. We're not fighting the final boss for another 10, 15 minutes, but he's there. <laughs> Quick punch. So now we go into probably the the dullest section of the game. The Palkey. 
Uh, but first we do have the the random the random fun of where the power key will land. So if you've been watching from the start, you'll know that at the start I got a lot of alerts to make sure that the uh, power key is going to spawn a random location in the drainage ditch at the bottom. There are a total of seven locations that it could be in. Um, ranging from one to five, they go from worst to best. So sort of, sort of but I'll explain better. So one, one is really bad, up to six, which is the absolute best. We call it God Pal. And then seven is the worst. So they go in a sort of circle. You'll see in a minute. That should be alert number 11 or alert number 10. As long as that's at least alert number 10, there's one more alert here. So skip all of this. Da, 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 da. Got him, and we're off. So, get your bets in, folks. What is your guess? One to seven. Which location will the pal key be in? Remember, seven is the worst, and then one through to six is uh is the next best five is what i had in my previous run should uh should point that out there is also a bomb that can randomly spawn in any of those locations as well uh what is considered a good or a great pal key obviously god pal position six is the best uh position four five and six are all considered good pal keys uh, as long as you don't get the bomb as well because uh, they are all three of those positions are faster than the best rat that you could go for. So here's hoping. So count them down. Six, five, four, three, bomb. Two, one. That is position one. The second worst position with a bomb, which means that is the second worst. No, sorry, that is the third. No, second. That is the second worst possible outcome. Only, only one outcome would have lost me more time, and that would have been if it was in position seven. Uh, when I dropped down into the ditch, I immediately went left. Position seven is to the right. We don't go right and check position seven because there's only one key on the right hand side. Well, there's only one location on the right hand side. So it's a time waste to go and check that location first. So we always go go left all the way to there and then go back to seven if we absolutely have to. So yeah, second worst power key location. Wonderful. Right, let's start putting them in. Uh, as long as we get to the computer, it doesn't matter that we get spotted by that camera. As long as we exit the door, doesn't matter that we get spotted by that camera. A little bit of skating there. By uh, by equipping and unequipping your weapon, um, Snake's walking animation resets, and he never actually puts a foot down on the floor, preventing the uh, preventing any noise from his footsteps. Uh, that's called skating. Because if you do it really quickly, it looks like Snake is uh, Snake is just sort of gliding a along the um, along the walkway. Slightly slower than just walking normally, but as um, as we approach the uh, the door to leave here, there's actually a, um, a prime opportunity to show what it looks like. So we get a really nice view of Snake from the bottom. There you go. So you can see his foot never actually touches the floor. Uh, and that's why that is... Um, that is useful to avoid guards from hearing our footsteps. Alright. Again, looks like I've lost a load of time. Mainly because I my splits were all over the place last run. I kept forgetting to split. So 
So not relying on the um, not relying on live split to tell me how long I've been in here for because my split in is not accurate. We listen to the music. It takes exactly 61 seconds for the power key to freeze or heat. So after 61 seconds, I want to leave. And I want to leave as close to 61 seconds as possible, as long as we're on the other side of 61 seconds. If I leave at, uh, you know, 60.5 seconds, then I've got to go back in and wait another 61 seconds. Uh, so to do this, crouch up against the wall, and as once I've heard the the synths play, come back in again, I can leave. There we go. And the power, the power key will now be frozen. This time I'm not going to check. I'm definitely not going to check it. Last time I did check it. This time I'm not going to. Could have, could have just held that a little bit longer to check it. But we're not going. I'm. I trust myself. I feel good about this. I've been paying careful attention to my uh, to where I should be uh, moving from and to. I feel like I've got this. So. Ooh. Famous famous last words, potentially. We shall see what happens in a second. Do some more skating past this guard. Got to be careful there. If, um, if, um, if you get shot during that transition, um, guard can kill you. There you go. The key was indeed frozen. Perfect. Right, off to heat the key. The really long trek. Yep, past that guard. So, we've now got the really long trek all the way back to the Blast Furnace. Woo! This is why Metal Gear Solid Any% percent isn't actually that interesting of a speedrun, because a decent chunk of it, about a at least a third of it, is just this section. It's a, it's a little bit it's a little bit more skewed um, in in everything else's favor on uh, on consoles as opposed to PC. I'm really I'm really enjoying the console run. It's it's been nice to come back to this and do something a little bit different. Con consoles are a little little less stressful than PC. There's a lot more going on at all times in the uh, in the PC version. To make our way through this room. Whoops, I've gone the wrong way. I'll take a slight time loss for having to flip that guard. It's supposed to go left instead of right. Oh well, it's not a bit. No biggie. Just flip the guard and run. Really didn't lose me that much time. And now I head back up the elevator. Well, this is one of the, the main reasons why I've come back to learn Metal Gear Solid 1 console. So I, I started running Metal Gear Solid 1 PC, any percent, three years ago. It's coming up to... No, no, it was. I would have started started learning it three years ago. Um, or was it two years ago? No, it must have been three years ago. Pretty sure it was three years ago. Um... Yes, indeed. I um, I started learning to speedrun during COVID because I needed something to do. Um, I have I I had been speedrunning very casually for about nine years prior. I started learning my first speedrun back in like 2011, 2012, but I never stuck at it. I you know it was always I'd do it for a little bit and then I'd give up and do something else. And um, I learned Klonoa 2 on the PlayStation 2 and Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Uh, for the Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis for you Americans in the audience. 
Um, but yeah, I never stuck with any of them. It was always something I'd do for a week uh, or two and then give up on. It was only when I finally got into MGS One PC that I actually properly embraced becoming a speedrunner. Uh, so yeah, in all the time that I ran MGS One PC, I never learnt console. I never came to console. The closest I got is when the PC No Major Glitches category was created. Um, I ran that, which is a bit closer to console. But not, not a lot. Alright, into... Uh... Into the Blast Furnace. Again, we're waiting 61 seconds. Uh, I'm not relying on the timer. Again, for this, I am going to be relying on that guard. When that guard gets to that position again, I can leave. Um... So yeah, in, in all of the time that I ran Metal Gear Solid 1 on PC, I never touched console. Um, however, the Master Collection is coming out in October. Uh, the Master Collection comes out four days after my son's expected due date. So uh, you can guarantee that I'm not going to be playing the Master Collection on release. It's already in my Steam library. I've already pre-ordered it and it's, it'll be ready to go. But I'm not going to get the chance to play it. Uh, so when I do come to actually speedrun it, and I, my intention is... Whether or not a board is created for it, I will be speedrunning Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3 as part of the Master Collection back-to-back. -back. I may even be doing all five. I can leave now. I may also do Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. And do all five. We'll see what happens. Um, yes, I will be speedrunning them because I think it will be fun. And we've already been told that the um, Metal Gear Solid 1 version of the game is, is basically... Well, it's... Um, you'll actually get the choice of which version of Metal Gear Solid 1 you want to install. You can play the original Japanese release. You can play the North American uh, NTSC release. You can play the European release in whichever language uh, you'd like. Um... No, you shouldn't play that one, because that one might be only 25, um, 25 FPS, because it'll be PAL. Uh, you can play what I'm playing, um, which is the Japanese integ uh, Integral release. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, I am not going so far as doing all seven games, uh, mainly because I have not learnt... Um, Metal Gear, Nez, and Snake's Revenge. One day, maybe. One day, I, I might do all seven. But I'm looking at um, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the three initially, and then five later. Uh, so yeah, you will get the choice of which version of Metal Gear Solid you want to play, um, or want to install and play. Um, if you are speedrunning, it will be. It, it's almost certainly, unless there's some major change. Will almost certainly be suggested that you run the Japanese integral version, which is what I'm playing. Um, you shouldn't play it with Japanese subtitles, you should play it with English subtitles. It's a slight time save. I forgot to change it before the start of this run. It's not a big enough cha time change to, uh, to to really warrant starting the run again. Um, but yeah, play, play the Japanese um, integral version. It is the fastest version. Uh, but, uh, also, the original Japanese version of the game has a slightly different board. So that's another another one you could play. Um, but the one version of the game that will not be available is the PC version. For good reason! The PC, the original PC port of Metal Gear Solid 1, uh, released in 2001, is based on the Japanese version of um, Integral. And it is awful. It is a really, really bad port. Um, is the only good thing about it is that it is a it is a fantastically broken speedrun. Um, you should never ever play p the PC version other than for speedrunning. Um, so you, as you won't be able to uh, to play the PC version as part of the Master Collection, you certainly shouldn't be able to, um, unless unless they're gonna unless they're gonna add weapon hotkeys to the PlayStation version. <laughs> Which they shouldn't, if they know what they're doing. Um. Oh, Cam Clark, voice of um, <coughs> voice of Liquid, <coughs> voice of Liquid Snake. Oh, that's cool. Um. 
then yeah, if I'm going to speedrun the Master Collection, I needed to come back and learn the console version of uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. So that's why I'm here. Um, now, for Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, um, I, play the, I primarily play the PC version of Metal Gear Solid 2. I have run the console version of Metal Gear Solid 2 on the um, HD. Actually, I've done... I've done the HD collection on PS3, and I've done Sons of Liberty PAL, um, which has an even uh, one uh, unique uh, glitch to it, um, which is interesting. Uh, I never got around to doing Snake Eater PAL, uh, but the um, the differences between the console version and the PC version of MGS2 and 3, well, there is no PC version of MGS3 for a start. Um, the console version and PC version of MGS2, there's no major difference that would warrant a change. My experience with the PC version of MGS2 will be absolutely fine when swapping over to the Master Collection. Same with my console experience of MGS3. Uh, so, as a result of that, I just needed to relearn MGS1. Um, Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, I shouldn't have any problems. Whoops. Um, they should run pretty much the same again. I just need to relearn them. I did recently do a rerun of Metal Gear. Um, I haven't done a rerun of Metal Gear 2 in a while, though. That one will need a little bit of work, probably. I'm, I'm really looking forward to them coming out. It's, it's a long time coming. You know, a very, very long time coming. Okay, that was um that was a little messy for, for Rex there. That could have been a lot better. I threw that chaff grenade too late. I got my positioning right. Seven seven punches forwards is um is the right position to be stood in. Right, phase two. I didn't need I didn't need that ration, but I thought I should use it just in case. Again, splits are probably wrong because the timings look worse than they are because I forgot to split my last run. These will, whatever happens, these will become my new best segment ones as uh, splits as well, probably. All right. Liquid was a little awkward. Uh, I've talked before about the, the input lag that's on the PSTV. Um, it's like a split second, like probably about a quarter of a second, I would imagine. Uh, input, input delay with them um, with the controller so it makes this a little trickier uh, i'm gonna mute my headset so that i can't hear because i want to be able to focus on the sound of my button mashing so i'm gonna punch punch liquid in a very particular rhythm so when uh when liquid wants to give me the all clear we'll get started Right, 
not not the ideal position. Um, I you don't really want um, you don't really want liquids going uh, going left. You want him going right uh, so that you can then just kick him off at the end. I had to uh, I had to convert from double taps to single punches because otherwise I would have gone backwards too far and I would have fallen off the edge. Uh, but considering the situation I I got myself into, that was the best I could have hoped for. Once I, I once I had it where he was going the wrong way, I that was pretty much the best you could hope for. All right, let's get out of here. All right, as we move into the escape sequence and the final section of the game. Let's go. Checkpoint two. Oh, uh, we used to make a checkpoint. All right, on to our final encounter with Liquid Snake. I don't have a second controller. Uh, the amount of trouble I've had having one controller plugged in. My D my DS4 is um, suffering a little bit. Both uh, bonus shots there. Uh, miss miss the first bonus shot of this section. There's a very very tight window to shoot liquid. As the um, as his jeep crashes into you, but it's only a couple of frames. Ah, I only get one bonus shot there, not what both. A nice action shot. Yeah, yeah. There we go, that is final input. Uh, but the run is not done until we hit the IGT at the end of the credits. We are going to have to sit and watch through all the credits. Um, I'm not going to bugger off to the toilet this time. Uh, and as I probably will be uploading this uh, to, uh, to YouTube, I will, I'm going to mute the recording of the audio. But not the stream audio. So you guys can still listen to the music. Uh, I won't be able to hear the music. Uh, and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you also won't be able to hear the music. <laughs> only, only those who are who are watching live on Twitch right now <laughs> will be able to hear the lovely tunes of um, the best is yet to come. Uh, the reason for that is um, Konami, more often than not, um, uh, apply copyright strikes <laughs> to, um, or at least claim copyright um, over the. Um, over the uh, over the piece, uh, the uh, subti subtitles are here that are here at the bottom. This is the reason why the uh, Japanese having Japanese subtitles is slightly slower, because uh, this section takes slightly longer to display these uh, subtitles than if you just had the English. Uh, so I lose a little bit, a slight bit of time as a result of that. But it's it's negligible. It's like a, a couple of seconds. And at this point, I'm not aiming for like world records or anything like that. Right, so uh, let's quickly. Mute, uh, mute the uh, mute the audio of the recording. So the stream, though you uh, you guys can can enjoy this lovely, lovely tune. So um, this is um, this is a much better run. Um, nothing major went wrong. Um, my uh, weapon glitches were better. They still weren't perfect, but they were much better. Uh, Palky was in a pretty shoddy position, um, and uh, there's a couple of you know there's a couple of bits that could still be a lot tighter. But overall, very, very pleased with this run. I, I'm already getting used to the um, the input delay. Um, there's still a couple of bits that could do with some extra attention. A liquid fight is is obviously one of them. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased to to finally, finally, after I, I bought this PS TV 
about two years ago. Um, in fact, actually, if I check, I can probably find. I bought it for. I bought it online from um, CEX. I probably have um, the receipt and can probably determine when I bought it. I bought this PSTV specifically to do this run. I've got other things that I could use it for, like um, playing Metal Gear Acid, Portable Ops. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, I do intend at some point to learn the five-minute um, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars run, uh, which we're showcasing at um, Pixel Perfect Marathon this, uh, this Saturday, uh, if you're interested in seeing that. That will be run by Wolf Bloxer. Um, uh, so, I, yeah, once I've watched his run, I might then run it myself just because I can. I've got Chinatown Wars on my PSCV. I'll do it. It'll be a, it'll be a laugh. Um, it's five minutes. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of other things that I can do with my PSCV. Um, and actually, the more that I've used my PSCV and the more that I understand how useful it is for retro gaming and, um, and emulation, I actually really want a Vita because um, um, I'm about to move house. Um, I currently live in Hemel Hempstead and I commute uh, into London or just just outside of London, outskirts of London. Um, and at the moment, my journey into work consists of a 10 minute bus journey, a 15 to 20 minute um, train journey and another 10 minute bus journey, plus the waiting in between all of those. Um, but I'm about to move to Aylesbury. Um, where my train journey in is going to be different. I'll still have a, I'll have about a 20 minute bus journey to get to the train station. And then it's about a 40 minute train journey into London. But the, it's a different station that it will stop at. And the station is directly opposite my office. There's no train, there's no bus on the other side. So I will, instead of having three really short journeys and then walking and transit in between, I now have one okay bus journey if I can bike or use a scooter or my wife can drop me off on her way to work, then great. But I now have a nice long, the, the big chunk of that journey is now a 40-minute train journey. Um, and I'd really like a Vita so that I can play games on it. <coughs> play, you know, PSP games that I never played. Um, you know, PS1 games that I never played. Um, you know, SNES, Mega Drive, Game Boy. The the the, the Vita is a. I um I uh, follow uh, a YouTuber called um MVG, uh, Modern Vintage Gamer, and he talks about the the PSP kind of being. Yeah, unless you're gonna get a Steam Deck, um, I do not have the money for a Steam Deck. Um, unless you're gonna get a Steam Deck, the the Vita is kind of the bet is the best emulation portable emulation device. Um. Yeah, you can do emulation on your phone, but you need a either need a controller or you know touch screen. It's not great. the The Vita is a really nice handheld. It's so easy to mod. If you've got a Vita, but you've got a PSCV and you haven't modded it, it's so easy. It's compl almost completely risk free. Like you, you have to go out of your way to fuck it up enough so that you can't do it, <laughs> so that you brick it. If you manage to brick it, you've probably done something impressive to brick it. Because uh, it's so simple to do, um, and yeah, it's um, it's a really nice device, and I'm hoping that because I've now got, I was running my PSTV off a uh, off a memory stick. Everything I had everything on a USB memory stick, but I uh, I've now invested in um, a um, a micro SD card and the SD to Vita converter, so it just plugs. So the SD card just plugs directly into the Vita slot of the. Um, of the PSTV. I'm kind of hoping that if I install all of my games and stuff onto that, that I could then just take it out of my PSTV, put it into my PS Vita and play on that, and then you know, just swap that over, and, and that would do it. Uh, but I, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to look into that. But yeah, I, I kind of would like a Vita now. Unfortunately, they're still really expensive for the for for how old they are. They're still really expensive. even the PSP. You know. A, you obviously you're not going to get a brand new one now. It's only going to be second hand. But even you know, and the only second hand PSPs I ever find are the 1000 model, the original 1000 series. It's so rare to find a 2000, 3000, or a PSP Go, which I wouldn't recommend a PSP Go to anyone. Um, but I, you know, I've always wanted a 2000 or a, 
Oh shit, I can skip this. Oh crap, I didn't realise that. Thanks, Ply. <coughs> can't skip this though, can I? No, can't skip this. Crap, that, that's meant I've lost time on my emulator runs as well, because I haven't skipped those during my emulator runs. Yeah, I know I know about playing with English subtitles. I uh, that's that's because I forgot to swap it. Um, oh, I can put the um, I can put the audio back on for the recording. Yeah? Um, yeah, like even still trying to get a, a you know a PSP one thousand because that's all that seems to be available. I've got I've got three PSPs, but none of them work. I really need to take them all apart and try and find the parts that do work to build a PSP that does work. Uh, oh, here comes time. There we go. 5920. So sub hour. Fantastic. Uh, that's exactly the kind of thing I want to see. Uh, sub hour is great. Uh, where would that actually put me? On the leaderboard. Subs for any percent on, on emulator and on console, sub hour is always that first major milestone. Uh, so getting that um, getting that on run two is um, is is really good. Um, the world record is currently a 5647, so quite a lot of work to get that down. Uh, but sub hour places me. Oh, in fact, actually, because this is a 5920, I push ahead uh, a, a couple more after sub hour, and that puts me fourth. That is fourth place on the leaderboard. I am 19 seconds behind third uh, by Modest Matt, and I am uh, 21 seconds ahead of Tromboncino in currently fourth, will move to fifth. Um, as, he, as he's here, I'm also 28 seconds ahead of Plywood in sixth. <laughs> well, he's currently fifth and will now drop to sixth. So, um, but yeah. I'm I'm really pleased. I was not expecting to get that high up on the board this quickly. Um kinda kinda wanna do another run and shave another 20 seconds to get third. That would be amazing. Uh but uh, that will not be for this night. Um it is uh, it's getting late. I've uh, I've been at work all day. We'll do so I'll do I won't finish just yet, but um I I'm not gonna do an, another full run of this tonight uh, but to to um because i will be uploading this to youtube for everyone who has been watching the vod on youtube thank you very much for watching um if you like what you've seen please hit that subscribe button as you can see by the uh the meter uh below me i am trying to hit 1000 uh subscribers as i said earlier in uh in the run um i'm about to become a father which means i'm going to be taking paternity leave not only from work but from streaming i usually stream every tuesday and thursday uh, but I will be not streaming for quite a while when my uh, when my baby is born. Um, so I will be shifting my attention somewhat to YouTube um, in the little bits of time that I have uh, in between things like when he's asleep and, and things like that. I'll be working on some. I've got some new ideas for some YouTube videos that I want to do. Um, so I'm hoping to hit a thousand YouTube subscribers so I can join the YouTube partner program. Um, so if you like what you've seen and if you're watching the stream live um, and you want to uh, you want to go and check out my YouTube channel. Uh, then uh, there is a link in the chat. No, there isn't because the stream bot, the, the chat bot isn't working on my stream. Um, it's youtube.com forward slash Nick RP Green. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Go check out some of my other videos and I'll uh, see you in the future.